Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you. I hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world when you're listening to this. I wanted to make a brief introduction into the call that you're gonna be listening to today. This is something different than I have done before in the past because normally what you see me doing is you see me bringing guests on the Cornelia Stephanie show and we have our show living heaven on earth and we're talking about all various subjects that support us in the evolution of becoming the new human here living heaven on earth. So recently um, I Cornelia Stephanie uh, was hired by Mina Puri. She hired me and our media company to do a webinar service for uh, a topic that she's really, really passionate about. And that is called the, um, the emotional intelligence, healing, healing your inner uh, emotional body from trauma, from betrayal, from abandonment, from any of the triggers that a lot of people are triggered by in the world today. So we put together a series of webinars that you're going to see when you're listening to this call. There's three of them. This is so, cause the reason why I'm asking you to um, listen to this introduction is because in the video, you're going to see that we're talking about dates like full moon, uh, new moon we were probably talking about that because we had the we had the full moon we had the solstice and because this all happened in june so we did this webinar series part one part two part three because it was such a huge success because the audience really loved it the people that came to the webinar we decided to make it available for the public and share it both on nina's podcast but also on the ks media cornelia stephanie media heaven on earth podcast, because it was so good. So I just want to say that when you're listening to this call, you're going to be hearing full moon, new moon, those dates have already come and passed. But there the information that's being shared is still so powerful and helpful. And we want to share it with you in case it will support you in your emotional healing and awakening the healer within. The other thing to point out about this is that Mina is offering a course that begins in July. And we're going to put everything into the description below. So there's still room uh, for the course. It's a, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna just put the information in the description below so that you can go check it out. But that is still available to you. So we wanna thank you so much for listening and for tuning in. Go check out the information and send us a message and let us know what you think. You can respond to the video, listening to it on YouTube here as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing for the show. We appreciate you so much. We wish you a wonderful day. Enjoy the podcast. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so we are starting and I just want to, we're a little bit early. I just thought we could carry on the conversation about- Conversation, moving. yeah, the joy, the you moving. Say, you love moving the body. I love moving because, um, you know, number one, it's so freeing that I find it really fascinating that how when we move the body, how I feel when the body moves. Mm. 
it isn't, doesn't just free the body, it frees your um, thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And then we really, you know, body is fluid and we can be fluid and wow, look at what I can do. Just a little change in the step changes the dance, changes the whole dance. And, you know, I always tell people dance in a way, in a totally new way, like mm-hmm. you're dancing one direction, really silly because that's one way to get out of the what get out of the the fixation on our mind that dance you know dance can be very specific form but it's just like move any which way move in a way that you crack yourself up yeah i know i know that you do that because i've witnessed you in person Um, you witness in person like i just i love doing that and i'm like oh this is just so funny somebody were to watch me like why are you who's there why is she having so much fun this woman there's no one here yeah. yeah, it just it's just so fun. It's so freeing. Well, it's wonderful. It's perfect for today, Mina. Allow me to begin this new masterclass sure. today with you. And thank you so much for coming in and doing this masterclass series. This uh, intelligence of emotions today is part two that we're going deeper into the role of the subconscious, what the, the role of the subconscious and how that affects our emotions, and then also about the emotional triggers. I want to thank the audience. I want to thank all of you that registered for this beautiful masterclass series with Mina today. And we want to thank you and also invite you to, if you have a question when you're listening to this class today, Day. And if you have a question, feel free to type it into the chat. And towards the end of the webinar, about 30 minutes after uh, we're done, we're going to go into a QA and a and possibly we'll choose your question to um, give it to Mina to ask Mina this question on your behalf. So we want to thank everyone. I'm Cornelia Stephanie. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you today. Let me introduce you to our uh, speaker. Our speaker is Mina Puri, and Mina is a master. She's a master in her own right. She has earned all the qualifications to teach this class today. And she is also the founder of the AyurvedicHealingCenter.com. AyurvedicHealingCenter.com. Be sure to look it up. A lot of people already know Mina because you all have seen her on social media where she does a lot of reels and shares a lot of uh, practices, even on her YouTube channel. Mina is the author of Healing Your Relationship with Food, international bestseller, and her newest book, Wake Up and Heal, which I encourage everyone to hurry and run and get that book and get started. We wanna thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you, Mina, for being here and teaching this wonderful class on the intelligence of emotions. Welcome to today's call. Cornelia, thank you so much. It really is not just my honor and pleasure, but it's just also so fun. Um, it's fun. You. Fun, so working with you. And uh, you know, this is serious work but we don't take it seriously. We have a lot of fun along the way. We don't take ourselves so seriously, but it is serious work, right? This is understanding how to hold that together. And I wanna thank all the the audience people who have registered and thank you so much for taking the time to do that. And why I'm grateful for you because I have a message to share. You know, the message is that we really can be done with the suffering and the pain. We really can be. You know, the information and the wisdom we thought that only was available to the elite few, to the enlightened, is now available to us, right? So I feel so blessed to be able to share this with you. And I'm grateful that you're listening to me. Yes. And Mina, I just want to acknowledge to Jinder. To Jinder, she, she is back with us. She was Hi, here. Hi, Hi, Tajinda. I just want to say hello. Thank you for chiming in. Anyone that wants to type into the chat and say hello to us, feel free to, like we said, if you have a question for Mina, feel free to formulate the question and then type it into the chat. We just want to say hello to you. And thank you so much for being here. And yeah, and also if you can just say hi and let us know where you're from. You're in this world of Zoom. It's really interesting to see how from different time zones we can all come together on this uh, computer screen here. So I'd love to hear where you're from. Yes, Christy Williams says hello. And hi, just Christy. Before, hi, Christy. Just before the meeting, I, we, did, we do have uh, 
Pallavi from Brookline, MA. Oh, hi, Pallavi. Yes, nice to see you. Yes, and I do know that people registered from all over the world, Mina. Uh, I know, isn't that exciting? You know, that this is, here's, you know, technology at its best. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. And so if we can continue to use the tool for good, um, it's a wonderful thing. And you know what else I wanted to point out to the audience here? Today is summer solstice, you all know. The longest day, the sun is the brightest. And I don't know where you're from, where you, the, how the weather is where you guys are. But here, there's a heat warning. It's like 90 degrees outside. So sun is at its peak, a lot of warmth. And it really is a time to tune into the magic of existence. There is a reason why all these planetary things, planetary, you know, the, the aspects, they, I believe they guide us. And I've been using that as a tool uh, to understand how to manage my energy and manage my inner world. So it's really an auspicious day. I offered water to the sun this morning. I, I know my mom used to do it, but the reason why I did it, and I said the sun's warmth, it can melt that what is stuck right? And the light can light, not only lighten up our load, but it can shed light on the corners of our psyche, which are dark. Mm. So in a way, so, so the water was like, you know, to de-intensify, but also to de-intensify so we can flow that which is stuck. So it's a wonderful, wonderful day today. So happy summer solstice to you all. Um, so just, I want to just acknowledge a few more names. So we have okay. Brittany. Brittany, she's from Iowa. She says, thank you for having this available. Thank and then we have, Hi, Brittany. Yeah, yes, we have Linda Cobb for Fort Kent, Maine. Okay. And Gregory Hi. Peterson. He was also with us the last time. I remember Gregory. Hi, Greg. Yes. And then we have uh, Tom from Novi. Novi, yes. Novi, Hi. yes. And we have Sabias Sahu. I'm sorry yeah. if I'm not pronouncing the name right. From That's Tom okay. Daniels. Yes. So we have a wonderful group. Thank you so much for coming in. Wonderful, Mina. Do you want to now talk to us about the role? Uh, how, what, what, what role does the subconscious play when it comes to our emotions? So... Think of subconscious as a part of our psyche that we are not aware of. So it's kind of like, um, you know, a picture of a rock, a big rock comes to mind that is submerged in water. You only see like the top 10%. So we think that, oh, there's a, there's a little stone on the surface. But we don't know that there's this heavy rock, 90% is submerged in the water. So what's submerged in the water is our subconscious. In a way, it is such a wonderful setup that we have that part of our mind that can store the experiences, the emotionality, the energetics of it. So when we are ready and willing, we can take a look at it, right? And because the truth is many times, you know, during the day, we are just, we are doing what we are doing here. We don't necessarily have time to um, analyze our reactions, what we are feeling, thinking, and to dissect every experience because we are just busy living life. So in the busyness of living life, many things that we get, we don't know what to do with, like somebody flipping us off in the freeway, or we talk to a family member and all of a sudden they're having a bad day, they blow up at us. And we're like, oh my God, whatever, I have a meeting, I have to go, can't attend to this. So this, all of this, what we cannot digest, these experiences, they get stored under the surface and we're not aware of them. So, but the truth is we're not aware of them, but they are there. And they, if we, neglect them long enough, we begin to form what's called patterns, belief patterns, habit patterns, right? So we begin to get the belief, you know, if every experience is somebody flipping us off, a family member growing up, a coworker telling us we are not good at our job, we feel like, you know, the world really sucks. 
So the belief is the world sucks and I just have to get through it. There's no fun, there's no enjoyment. So the belief pattern now is starting to form. So when we are living our life, we think we're living our life consciously. Actually, we're living 90% of our life, we're operating at a subconscious level because the belief comes, belief is operating, telling us the world sucks. The world is just bitter. So we reach for that chocolate. We reach for the alcohol to sweeten the deal because it's, it's a bad taste in the mouth to think that the world is such a horrible place. So we need to sweeten the deal. We need to like, sub, you know, let, let ourselves know that maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I can take a moment to kind of sweeten up my experience. So, and then what happens, we keep on wondering, I'm always eating junk food. I'm always, um, you know, getting attracted to really negative relationships because we believe the world is a hostile place. The universe says, thank you very much. I agree with you. Here's more experience for you to enjoy. Here's another experience, which is where you're going to experience the hostility. So we attract to us those relationships that are going to recreate the experience of our beliefs. And then we think, oh my God, I'm telling you, see, I told you the world sucks. I just had this relationship. I cannot believe, I cannot believe this person would do this to me. Why me? Life is just horrible. And we keep going and going and going. So we look to the surface thinking, can someone help me break off this addiction? Can someone help me with the heartache of that really horrible relationship? And I keep redoing it and repeating it. So here comes the experts. They're like, do this diet, do that diet, do this mindset, do that mindset. You know, here are the five things to check off on your checklist when you're dating somebody. Well, they work until they don't. They don't hold, they don't work for long term because the much stronger. The strongest force that is running the show is our subconscious beliefs. That's coming from the undigested, neglected, abandoned emotions, reactions and that we didn't even know to look at. They actually have formed a pattern and we are simply, our outer world experience is simply mimicking that. So yes, the subconscious is a wonderful thing because it can hold what we cannot uh, attend to right away, right away, but we do need to attend to it. We do need to attend to it because when we don't attend to it, there's a psychological weight that we carry on our subconscious, on our psyche. So that lethargy, the low-grade anxiety, the restlessness, like, you know, life is not going anywhere. It's coming from that weight because so much of our energy is vested in trying to put a lid on it, in trying to hold it, holding space for it. So that's why that's the role of the subconscious. And thank God for triggers because there is no other way to access the subconscious without the triggers. So, you know, when we think about, you know, when we use the word trigger, all of a sudden we feel this like frantic, this emotional energy, this um, not pleasant experience. So when the triggers come, um, most of us actually are not even uh, attuned to it. We think I behave this way because that person, they did something, it's their fault. I'm not getting triggered. I'm getting triggered because you did something as opposed to I'm getting triggered because it's about me. Because there's something in me, a wound is coming up that has not healed. And that person just catalyzed the revealing of it. And thank you for doing that for me. We don't do that. We feel triggered what we do. We avoid situations, people. Not that we shouldn't. We don't need to deliberately test ourselves all the time but it's like, how often is this happening? So we avoid, you know, many times we withdraw, you know, like I can't stand my, for example, mother-in-law is a good example. It's an easy example, blame the mother-in-law. You know, I, I just, I avoid my, my mother-in-law. She just triggers me, that old woman. And, but you know, the beauty of life, the beauty of the universe, it's like, huh, don't worry, you're avoiding that. Here's more lined up for you. 
for you to see that it's actually about you, it's not your mother-in-law. I know the mind says, no, but you don't understand this woman. She's always like this. It is her. She does this. Look at all the other people that she knows. She, it's her. That's her personality. She does that to everybody. I'm not the only person. And you are correct. And you're not correct. Who cares what she does to others? What are you going to do about your mother-in-law? Are you going to fix her? It's not your job, first of all. Secondly, you can't. If something is triggering you, I don't care how horrible the external experience is, situation is. It's still your job. It's still your responsibility. You've got to figure it out. As long as I am getting triggered, there's something in there for me. I always look at it, you know, look at life this way. If something is upsetting me, okay, this is something I'm going to sink my teeth into. What is it? What the heck is it? To me, that's material. That's learning. That's education. And when I get that aha moment, it's like, oh, wow, I see that now. What does it do to me? It makes me a little bit more whole. Because now, before it was, I only want to feel and have the experiences that feel really, really good. Everything that sucks, I don't want it. Put it away. So what we do, actually, we fragment our lives. We not only fragment our lives, we become like a, a restricted or a contracted version of ourselves. That's not, that's not holism. Holism is, here's I really wonderful experiences. Here's when these experiences really suck. And, but I'm going to include them in. I'm going to look at them because it is ultimately about me. It's my responsibility. All of a sudden, you have expanded. You have expanded. You have expanded. And guess what happens? You know that nasty mother-in-law? All of a sudden, she's just so nice. <laughs> what happens? Even nicer people begin to appear. Your relationships, your contact, you just have such a joy connecting with people because you have looked at what's been sitting in your subconscious garbage bin. You have dumped the garbage out and you're fresh, clean, and a new again. You're full of light. So that's why thank God for triggers because if it wasn't for triggers, um, the, how else would we would just be walking with that tiny bit of rock uh, visible on the surface, but totally hidden. We will be walking around hidden, just like robots, just barely living. Because it's not, you know, when we delve into our subconscious patterns and behaviors and experiences, you don't know what's there underneath. You get to know the possibilities. You expand into new possibilities of being. Your gifts, your talents, your creativity, your divine purpose or mission is hidden under there. Your truth is hidden under there. So, you know, when we don't lift that rock to see what's there, we're not going to find it. So look at the, the opportunity cost here. Look at what we are missing we can connect with who we are. Look at what we are missing when we are not willing to look deeper. So when the triggers come, um, what to, you know, your one question was, what, what do we do with the triggers? First of all, we really tune into the body is such a, a great mechanism to give us a clue. So what when you get triggered, I know there's like a surge of emotion that comes, you can feel the energy. The heart begins to beat faster. You may feel flushed or you, you're then, you know, the mind is busy and thinking, okay, come back. Uh, how am I gonna handle that? You're making up stuff in your head, what you're gonna say and you're gonna say it's so good. It's gonna land right then and there. And that person is not gonna do anything to me. Um, so you feel that intensity, you know, you, 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 some people may even get like a knot in their tummy because they don't wanna confront. They're like, oh my God, what is this? Or they excuse themselves. So they just, you know, begin to nervously eat or nervously do something, you know, make a fist and tighten up their body. That's a clue because this way of feeling in the body is not a norm for the body. It's a clue as to, oh, wow, 
I am getting triggered. Please take a pause. <laughs> Please don't run, run to the other person and just regurgitate, just dump on them. It's not gonna serve you. Forget the other person, they're gonna be you know, baffled, but it's not gonna serve you because this is an opportunity for you to tune into what is, what is going on? What am I feeling? Why? Where am I feeling it? What is the feeling that I'm feeling? Wow, I don't like this. I don't like feeling this way. This is just, hmm, why again? Be okay with not being okay. Take a little time, an hour, two hours, until it, until it becomes clear to you. And I promise you, it doesn't take a whole lot. It doesn't take days and days on end. You just sit with it. So, you know, we talked about, Cornelia and I were talking about how the, the, the you know, I was talking about I just did Tai Chi. Uh, that came from Iran and there were some um, bunch of older women doing Tai Chi and I just joined them. It was, it's just right outdoors. I just really loved it. The subtlety, the softness of it. And the softer, the feminine energy is what's rising because it's been suppressed for so long. So feminine is not just women, feminine energy in men and women both, okay? We have suppressed it because we haven't understood the power of it, or we've been too scared to look at the power of it. So when the triggers come and you're getting all these physical reactions, it's about softness. It's about surrendering. It's like, I just, I just feel awful. I, I'm getting, I'm feeling this, you know, once I started looking deeper as to what it is, I feel pain. And all of a sudden, you know, then the question is, have you felt this way before? Inevitably, all the time, the question is going to be, yes, of course you have. You know why? Because a feeling is an energy. It just didn't get created now. It's just that that external event catalyzed it for you, thank God. So you can see it again in the hopes that can you please see it and heal it so you are not then constantly being affected by it. So look at what, you know, have you, have you experienced this before? What is your pattern of response? Um, this is what I mean by that. Not everybody responds, like I said, not everybody responds the same way to the triggers. Some people just get into an argument. They just want to get it out of the system. They can't handle it. Others, like I mentioned before, they run away, they withdraw. Or they think, or they you know, come into this, they surrender, but they surrender in such a negative way. It's like, it's my fault. No, 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 you were perfect. It's me. What am I doing wrong? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm bad. It's that negative self-talk. I don't know why we do that. I think it's like, look, I'm beating myself enough. So please don't beat me up. Leave me alone. It's all, that's, a, that's a strange way of surrendering. <laughs> surrendering is not beating yourself up. Surrendering actually is loving yourself in spite of the fact that you don't feel all that good. That's why to love yourself, right? If you have a child, a friend next to you not feeling good, what are you going to do? Beat them up? You're going to put your arms around them. You're going to say, I know you're not feeling okay, but just, you know, here, have some water. Here, have some chocolate if you must. And be tender, be gentle, be kind, be loving, be patient. And allow yourself to be as you are. This is the feminine energy. This is softness. And when we do that, first of all, oh, thank God, I don't have to fix anything. Thank God, I don't have to go fight with that mother-in-law. Who wants that? It's a pain. It's painful because it's like, you know, here comes the, you know, fireworks. It's just going to burn everybody. It's like, thank God I don't have to do anything. Thank God I don't have to understand anything. Thank God I don't have to fix anything. Can I just be with it? I think that's if this is such an important, powerful shift if we can make it. We're coming from this mental flow, ego-driven life. It's like, fix it, fix it, fix it. 
Only good is accepted. When you feel good, only that's accepted. Only good things are expected. Only positive things are expected. Never mind what the heck we feel, right? So it's like, no, whatever is, is, whatever is showing up is 100% accepted. This is presence. Can you be with it? Don't give it any other name. Don't fix it. Don't hide it. Don't blame others. Just be with it. And it's energy. When you surrender, when you open the space for it, it does its thing. It ebbs and flows. Mina, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, wondering if the question then becomes, can you allow yourself to feel bad? Yeah, I love that question because it's right on the point. Can you allow yourself to feel bad and still live? Can you be really angry? Can you really be in pain and still um, be okay at the same time? Still trust that this is, this is what you're here to experience. You know, this morning, I, as I was going for a walk, I really felt like a new timeline, like, thank you, God, for giving me another opportunity, another kick at the can, so to speak, another, another life to live. So I felt so renewed. And I felt like this soul that God is smiling at me, that he just dropped into this body and say, here, here's a gift, go experience it. And I was just having a wonderful time, flowers, nature, whatever not, right? And then I come, come across this Tai Chi people and I was just magic. So I started doing Tai Chi. I come running up and I'm laying down on the yoga mat to do some stretches. And what do I hear? The construction trucks outside. I mean, construction right outside the window. I, if you understand how annoying that can be. It came right through the window. I laughed my head off and I'm like, and thank you so much for that too. Then if that was not enough, I think in my building, they were checking the fire. I didn't know that. So anyway, this fire alarm, can you imagine anything more annoying? It just like beep, beep, like I'm like, okay, waiting for you to end any day. And I laughed my head off and I said, this is when you come into the existence of you know, consciousness form this body, you have to open your heart to all of it, to the annoying, to the pleasant, to the joys, to the pain. And frankly, how would we value joy, pleasure, peace until we taste the pain? We don't have a contrast. We learn by contrast. So when you're going through have being triggered and all the emotional world is right on the top and you don't know what the heck to do with it, taste it. Feel it because when you clean it up, when you go to the other side, you're going to notice what you feel. You're going to be so uh, welcoming that feeling of peace, that feeling of balance, that feeling of equanimity, that feeling of wholeness, because it, it's providing you a contrast. We won't know what love is until we experience lack of love, which is fear, right? I mean, we've been facing fear in the last two years more, so everyone has fear. That's why it's taking us, that experience of fear is taking us into more and more people are talking about love. Love everyone, respect people's views and opinions, stop changing people, we're talking about compassion, we're talking about acts of kindness, you know, it's the fear, it's the feeling of it. We're talking about value life. Life is short. Enjoy every moment. I mean, when you open social media, all these kinds of things and reminders are there because we are now beginning to value the life, the preciousness of life, the preciousness of, you know, the value of peace, the value of our health, because it was challenged. It was under attack, right? So this is, that, that to answer your question is we, we, allow, we allow ourselves to feel what we feel. Even when we feel bad. Even when we feel bad. And actually in feeling bad, 
we begin to feel good. So talk about, you know, that there's a term um, in grief, there's sweet sorrow. Mm -hmm. When the tears are running, the heart is breaking in pieces. You know what that is? It's sweet sorrow. Mm -hmm. It's a sorrow that is allowed to move through us. It, it, that becomes sweet. So allow yourself to feel bad. That's going to make you feel good. <laughs> I know. It yeah. really is. I it's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. Yeah. From it's bad a contra just good. sit with it. Sit with it and feel bad. And just even say, just say, I just feel so horrible. I have said this a few times the last two years. And I'm like, my God, how much more? How much more? All I feel like I'm doing is healing. What the heck? When did I sign up for this contract? But I lived. But it wasn't like, oh my God, it's so painful. It was just fun, annoying, um, adventurous. I was curious. I was baffled. I was tickled. All, all kinds of feelings about that. You know, we want to invite you, the audience, if you have any questions about the subconscious or uh, emotions or the triggers, if you are experiencing anything like this in your life right now, now would be the time to go ahead and type your question into the chat as we continue on this beautiful discussion of emotional wholeness. That's what it is that we're doing here, right, Mina? Yeah, emotional wholeness. I love that. You know, I want to share a little, this, this, this people will remember. When you, here's a hand and I point a finger and three fingers are pointing towards me. My dad taught me this. So when I point a finger to somebody outside, it's your fault. You know, the three fingers are pointing towards me. We don't look at that. So I want you to look at that. It's not blame. It's like, no, 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 look within. You, you don't need to worry about this. Just look within. It's about you. It's, it's, if something is triggering you, you have to understand your own making. What, why, where, how? How can you come to a place where can you just listen and be present to other people and situations without being triggered? What would that look like? So we have a question from Shabina. How okay. to be more aware of the subconscious? How to be more aware of the subconscious? Okay. So, you know, one way to really get started for a week, I invite you to write, uh, write a journal. Day one, day two to day seven, day one. Talk about how are you feeling? What, is, what, what are you feeling? Okay, disappointed, mad, confused, ho hum, nothing big, excited, whatever it is, write that down. And then during the day, tune into your behaviors. How are you with the relationships? How are you showing up? What do they think about you? Do you have good relationships? What about people, other people, workplaces, children, if you have children, neighbors, or when you go grocery shopping? And, and when you go to sleep at night, take a little inventory and saying, how was today? How was my day today? Because we, when we are feeling the same old way all the time, we just think this is norm. We, normal, we normalize um, mediocre life. We normalize low-grade anxiety. We normalize one to two diagnoses or three or more. It's no big deal. Everyone has it, right? We normalize it, but we normalize it. It is not normal. So write that down. So do take an inventory for seven days and notice if, you, if something emerges, a pattern begins to show up that, wow, you know, six out of the seven days, I don't feel good. I react, I keep doing, and you know, it's really tuning into your inner, inner chatter. And the second, I said first, because people can write very quickly, but I really invite you to learn meditation. Um, there's a heart-based technique that I teach, it's on my website, free download, so to go learn that technique. You need to have a meditation practice. It's no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. If you, meditation is a way to make conscious, what is in the subconscious? Are you with? Is a whole study of that. So start with meditation. So, yeah. thank you, thank you for that, Mina. That was beautiful. 
Any tips on opening up space for surrendering? Make a cup of tea, <laughs> sit in your favorite chair, put the phone away, put the book away, get a blanket if you need one, not today, it's hot today, but just get comfortable and just sit, sit and sip your tea, look out into the space of the window, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, do absolutely nothing, plan nothing, fear nothing, figure out nothing. Just sit and have your tea and look at something. Be fascinated by it. Beautiful. Thank so you. our next question, well, uh, let's see. I want to uh, acknowledge that Cindy commented saying, Mina, you are right on. We have to feel, embrace, and get through the situation, not control it. We must welcome our emotions and be grateful not to conquer, but to embrace it. React not with fear, react with love. And that's by Cindy. That's wonderful, Cindy, right on, you got it. And then we just wanna bring this last question in and that is by Brittany. And Brittany asks, how do we digest possible trauma that has been suppressed that may be hard to recall? How can we work through it? Yeah. So one of the really smart thing about trauma is it hides itself until it feels you're ready to handle it. And so that's, a, that's you know, she, she asked such a question that segues into the course. That's why you need to do inner healing work. That's why I've designed a course, a curated a course, a small course that happens in July, six steps to emotional freedom. So that's really, it's a freedom from all the trauma and that we have endured, that we have not known what to do with it. Because frankly, we don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to put it in the heart. We don't know what it means to heal it. So um, is this Brittany? So Brittany, I really invite you as I'm gonna invite all the audience here to sign up for the course in July. Uh, the course is five to six hours, it's um, Tuesday, from 12 to 2.30, two Tuesdays of the last two weeks of July. And you cannot not afford to take the course. If you are already here, you signed up for these webinars. Obviously, you are interested in this work. Obviously, there's something in these webinars that drew you here to listen to me. So don't second guess yourself and think, Oh yeah, I've heard it before. I promise you the course you have not heard it talk about and give you the exercises and the meditations like this before. It's not something you're gonna find in YouTube or Google. And you can find a lot of information in, you know, on the internet. But I'm talking about how do we take this wisdom that's available to us and personalize it. So the course is about, we have information. Yes, you can read my book, um, but how do we transform? You know, we can talk about healing. We can talk about healing the trauma. We can talk about, you know, acceptance. We can talk about how to have presence, but these are mental concepts and it's a good place to begin, but we need transformation. For transformation to happen, we need to embody it because the experience has happened. Like I mentioned in the last webinar, it has happened in your energetic field. What that means is it's in your tissues, it's in your body. We cannot talk ourselves out of any situation that we never talked ourselves into. Trauma happens. We didn't say, please traumatize me, right? We can't talk ourselves out of it because it came, it happened. It's a, it's a part of your nervous system. It has left its imprint there. It is sitting in your subconscious. So we need to do the work, the somatic work to heal it. And that's what this course is about. Um, uh, it begins in July, like I mentioned. And you know, what a great opportunity on a day of the summer solstice when we are asked to set an intention. So an intention that is backed up by a strong action really sends a message to the universe, I'm ready. I'm done with this pain and suffering. I'm ready to heal. 
I'm ready to jump to the next new timeline. I'm ready to have some joy and peace and happiness in my life. Nothing states that your intention, nothing makes your intention clear than when it is an action. So I invite all of you who are listening to this, you came here for a reason. When do not let the mind, which is so strong, to give you many reasons not to do it. Because you'll continue to dabble into this type of information, you're going to get nowhere. You'll get a piece here, piece there. I want to let everybody know, Mina, where they can access the next steps into yeah. this deep work, because it's going to support people also to work on their trauma. Mm -hmm. I know, like, we have another question from Christy Williams. I'm just going to bring this into this discussion, and that is, sure. this is powerful positive in the wake of tragic loss. So even working together with Mina in her upcoming course, letting go of people who disallow this fullness in living is Christy's challenge, and she mm -hmm. um, is asking for advice there. But before you give the advice to this, I just want to encourage everyone, all of you that are listening today to this call, Mina is offering everyone a $25 discount. If you go today, once you finish this call, that you go into her AyurvedicHealingCenter.com. I posted the link here in the chat. You can click on it and follow the uh, the page downward says six steps to emotional freedom. She also is giving everyone $25 off that registers today. And you cannot not do this because it is such a no brainer, this amazing course that's going to support you in your healing. The other thing is there is a payment plan that is set up. So if you can't afford to pay the $295 right now, then you can make payments. And so you can afford $100 per month. And that is easily set up on at the AyurvedicHealingCenter.com. Go take a look at it. Download the next six steps right now and take the reins on your own healing. And I guarantee you that Mina will support you in becoming the healer within. You know, the... Um... You know, what's really amazing is how this all lined up, right? Here's we are like at this, you know, this is kind of a new portal point where can we internally shift into that higher state of consciousness, right? And then there comes this, you know, this course that I'm offering to you today on the webinar. Um, so the course, think of that as an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you um, to go ahead and get your feet wet, go ahead and start the process. And here's a you know, wonderful thing about healing process. Once you begin, there are some of you who are here. I know Gregory has done many courses with me. Once you start the process, it does you. It does you. So the question you want to ask yourself is like, how long do you want to continue to suffer? What is the cost that you are paying that you cannot monetize? in your happiness, in your health, in your relationships, in the quality of your life. You can't put a price on it. So how long do you are willing to continue to suffer when there's an opportunity comes knocking at your door? That's why you signed up. So take the opportunity, take the action, sign up for the course. You're going to be glad you did. The course is composed of, I pack a lot in the courses, there's meditations, there's guidance. I don't throw information at you. That's not my way of teaching. I really want you to learn. I really want you to get the answers that you came to get. I want you to heal. I want you to feel better. So I, I don't leave anything in done when it comes to teaching. I have many you know, tricks up my sleeve, a lot of modalities. So go ahead and click the link today, get the additional discount and sign up, sign up for the course. So those of you that are going to be listening to the replay later, this replay is going to be available for 24 hours. And we're inviting you also by midnight tonight to sign up for the Emotional Freedom course that Mina is offering at AyurvedicHealingCenter.com. Go check it out. Go register, save $25. Your higher self invited you 
to this experience so that you can heal. You have all the tools, everything is available for you right now. And this is the perfect time. So I wanna close up our webinar, Mina. Can you believe it's been 45 minutes? Wow, been- I thought we just started. <laughs> it, it, it always feels so good. Love talking about consciousness. And you, you audience, you all are so amazing from all around the world, the people that have joined us today. We want to thank you so much for coming in. And I did get a question about um, part one that would would you be able to follow the session in part one? I apologize, but part one, we we did extend the replay for a while and it's just not available anymore. So uh, we, but we wanna thank you, stay tuned for this session and then also be sure we're going to have another webinar again next week next as week. well. And you know, um, yeah, enjoy whatever webinar you are at. Don't worry about the information you have missed. Tune into the information that you're getting. Can you do something about it? I guarantee you, when you're ready, whatever you're ready for, you're going to hear it. Trust that process is going to come to you. You're going to find it. Mina Puri is an enlightened teacher. And with that, we're going to close. Oh, Anna, thank you so much. (laughs) Yeah, with that, we're going to close the call today. We want to thank you so much for coming in. May we all rise into our highest and best. And thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Mina, for your blessings and all your courage. Thank Thank you, you, everyone. And don't forget to dance or sing. Bring some joy into the summer solstice celebration. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.